Hello, wonderful boomins. Get it? Nope. Well, I usually say humans, and I did it. I, I get it. I okay. just mean, like, nope. Not funny. Next. Gotcha. <laughs> Next opening. Happy Halloween, wonderful humans. My name is Anthony. And my name is Eric. And we're the board game dads. Uh, we're not going to keep this up the whole and time. I wonder how long we're going to keep doing this for. <laughs> Welcome, though, folks, to part three Halloween episode. Part three. Shh, 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 shh. You like slash marks and sound effects for that one. Where's your sound effect four. machine? Part four. Uh, oh, that's true. Uh, yeah, Dadcast. I don't know why it's not working, though. It's working. Sweet. But yes, folks, this is our fourth Halloween video. If you have no idea what we're talking about, uh, go back and check out the Dadcast and then also our part one and two of Halloween holiday spotlights where we talked about games featuring haunted houses, uh, games to uh, feature some classic monsters. monsters. And tonight in the grand finale... These are games that are great to play on Halloween night itself. So hopefully you've got some stuff planned, maybe some trick-or-treating, maybe a little costume party, but try to squeeze in a game if you can, because this is like part of the best time of year to play these types of games. There's so many that we had to do four videos. That's true. It's also the best time of the year. It's the best night of the year to watch like a scary movie. So you really got to kind of like weigh your options on Halloween night. Like, do I want to watch a scary movie for two hours? Or do I want to go play a scary game? Because the day after Halloween, I don't feel like watching scary movies anymore. Mm. I'll still play scary games or Halloween, probably not Halloween themed game, but like, I'm just saying, it's like the day after Christmas, I stopped watching Christmas stuff. It just, I still listen to the music though. Right. Right. And if you really want to scare, go back and watch our first episode ever. Frightening, frightening stuff. <laughs> All right, so it is Halloween night, and uh, we're talking about some more games here that are ideal for that. Uh, before we get into any picks, though, a little bit of tidbits about the history of trick or treating. All right, so Eric, what did you find out about this in your extensive research? Uh, I found out that during the medieval times, I believe, probably i think it was in ireland i'm really not sure uh trick-or-treating really originated and they called it guising i believe you're correct in the yeah. ireland part yeah um that's all i remember i could make a bunch of stuff up <laughs> say that i read that somewhere and it'd probably be true but i didn't I just, yeah there was no like many things there's no like super clear cut you know it started on this date by this person right. kind of thing um so i did read that guising thing i read something else too that said something about um, when All Souls Day became a thing, which I think is November 2nd, the night before the the poorer people and then eventually just children would go around to the wealthy people and get the soul cakes, which I guess is the precursor of a treat of some kind, in exchange for them promising to uh, pray for their dead relatives and so forth. So that whole soul thing kind of started mm. to evolve into, I guess, other things. And then I also read that people would just do random stuff like sing and dance and try to get you know food or something so i guess wasn't it like a dias de las muertes isn't that halloween as well uh the well the that dead? is or is that am i completely off the day that that is a, halloween. that's a mexican specific holiday i don't know if it is actually on halloween though hmm. i'm not sure about that someone will probably correct us yeah i think it's not the same because i kind of feel like when we were or at some point, we were looking up holidays to do videos on. I'm pretty sure I saw a Day of the Dead. And I don't think it was in October. I think it might be early November, though. Okay. Because there's like actually a good amount of games that have that um, that theme, or at least that artwork, uh, to it, really. So I, I looked it up. It was a few games that we could have talked about. I celebrate it on the 1st or 2nd of November. So uh, it's there you go. after Halloween. So you scratch what I said earlier about not watching scary movies the day after Halloween. It now has been extended for two days after go Halloween for, for me. I highly recommend the um, movie called Coco, uh, animated movie, which is about that holiday specifically. Right. Pretty cool. Uh, anyway, let's... 
I just wanted to ask you real quick, because we haven't talked about this. Have you ever done or have you, you know, I guess, ever seen or done it at the school, trunk or treating? Yes, we did trunk or treating uh, a few times when I was when I was teaching. Very popular at schools. Cool. Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty cool. We would everybody would decorate their trunk in a sort of like, you know, scary theme or whatever kind of theme they want it. Right. And then you just give out candy to the kids. Um, cool. Yeah, it's pretty popular. I have not participated in that, but that seems like a lot of fun. Something to do with the kids, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a good alternative to yeah. walking around if you, especially if you don't have like a neighborhood that has a lot of, I guess, a lot of kids that don't participate in it or whatnot. Uh, it's a nice little alternative to that. All right, one last little tidbit of information about trick or treating. Got it. And uh, and I don't actually know the date, but whenever it was that somebody decided, hey, you know what would make a real great trick or treating bag? A pillowcase. Game changer. I thought that was yeah. your idea. No, they, people people <laughs> were doing that long before, and that was probably my parents' idea anyway. But well, like, I definitely learned it from you. I'll say that much. <laughs> that 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 was huge. You could carry so much more. Nothing's ripping. Nothing's breaking. You don't have to stop home and unle yep. uh, unload so that your parents could like hide some while you're not there. Throw it right over your back, right? Yep. So you don't have that like annoying like handle heaviness going on. Just kind of yeah, that was uh, that was whoever invented the pillowcase as a as a trick or treating bag. <laughs> Thanks. We would love to meet you and shake your hand yeah. wherever you are. All right, Eric. Um, do you have an honorable mention for tonight's list? Ooh, I actually didn't even think about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to. Pass it on to you. <laughs> I'm trying to think of one real quick. How about you? Do you have an honorable mention? You know what? I do have one. Uh, King of New York. There is a Power Up expansion or something like that for Halloween. And I don't have a picture of it. And I thought about taking one. Um, but really, it just it adds two characters. One of them is like Pumpkin Jack. Not from Disney, like Halloween Jack. But like, yeah. you know, dude with the pumpkin head. And the other one's the Boogeyman. So they can just play the same game as a Halloween-themed character. And that's a cool thing to do, Halloween night. Works for me. Yep. Um, my honorable mention is a reskin of a popular game, two-player game, called Patchwork, which has a regular edition, a Christmas edition, an Americana edition, and as of a few days ago, a Halloween edition. I have not picked it up yet. I do not know how different it is. The other ones are not different at all besides the artwork. Although I think this one has eyeballs instead of yeah. buttons, <laughs> which is good enough of enough change enough for me to want it. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually I, I, I forgot about this one. I mean, just bought it today. <laughs> like, <Man. laughs> didn't even think about it for an honorable mention. That's all right. Now we got two of them. There Let's go. get to game numero uno. Game numero uno. Start us off. All right. So first game I want to talk about is called Welcome to, which. We've all heard, we've probably all played, and we've talked about it before. So I'm not going to actually cover the game, but it has a bunch of these little thematic expansions, uh, specifically one called Halloween Thematic Expansion. And so that's my number one, playing it with this. It's It doesn't add much. It adds a different scoring card for the, the third scoring thing. It's like N degrees. I'm not really sure what to call them. And it adds a different, you know, page which has candy corns and ghosts and you circle one of them when you put a number into that house and that's it and then you get like some sort of bonus otherwise the game doesn't change it's a great game and while you're playing if you really you know start looking at the board and everything you see these bats and i think there's some witches and there's a bunch of pumpkins out and it just looks really cool and it just yeah. makes me think of halloween night it's got the right color scheme and it's it's cool it's like you're planning your your you know your, your neighborhood so that you can go trick or treating and you can go up these. So it it is. I know it's a very very thin connection to actually Halloween night, but because it's a neighborhood decked out in Halloween, mm -hmm. I gave it a pass, and that's my number one. Now I know you've played this one. How do you feel about this? Out of out of the uh, the thematic expansions, I think this one is up at the top for me. Honestly, I agree. Um, you know, I again, they're all pretty thinly veiled, right? I mean, it's a flipping yeah. right. There's not much theme in it to begin with, but you're right. The color scheme for sure. Um, I feel like it's easiest to explain what's new in this one as opposed to the other ones, right? Right? Like you're just like you said, you're just circling 
a ghost or a candy corn. And what those do is pretty clear at the top of the of the sheet there. Candy corn just going to give you straight up victory points if you have, you know, whatever you have there. And the ghosts are going to give you a couple of extra things, right? Like extra pools. I forget what else is up there. Um, uh, they give you I an think extra. Pools or um, the forest. Yeah, or parks, yeah, yeah. Parks, not forests. <laughs> Yeah, so they they let you you know advance in a couple of the scoring columns that are that are going to be added up at the end of the game, um, and I like having a different option as to one of those uh, N one N two and three things. It's cool to have one of those yeah. that's not the same in every game, but yeah, I like this one a lot. And I think if we were if if Google Earth was a thing when we were <laughs> when we were trick or treating, I kind of have a feeling that we would have been doing some planning ahead of time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Be like, you know, I could see us being like, all right, you know, this house gave us like crap last year, and just like xing them off. The map. Like, don't even go to that door. Um, so I, I, I'm interested to see if anybody uh, goes that far that's trick or treating these days. But <laughs> I agree. Welcome to is is a great game. So easy to get out. Easy to play over Zoom or remotely. However, however you do that. Um, and yeah, can't say enough good things about this game. One of our our favorites here at Board Game Dads, for sure. Yep. All right, so moving on, my first game here is specifically taking place on Halloween night because it is about trick-or-treating. So here's Ghost Love Candy. This is actually a Steve Jackson game, and yeah, it ranks pretty low overall. It's in the <laughs> 7,000s or so. Definitely not very popular. Um, but I think it's a, it's a hidden gem here. So this is one of those games where you're going to get a deck of cards that are just numbers. I think it's one through nine. So everyone's going to get the same deck with the exception of the artwork. And the artwork is you know pretty simple, but it's, it's also comic and, and pretty, pretty funny. Um, so you get to pick your deck. You want to be Ruby Joy. I personally like uh, Mick Spooky because I can say, <laughs> curse you, Mick Spooky. <laughs> And then there's Toppington there. So basically, you're going to get the same deck of cards. And then you're also going to get one of these candy cards face down, which is going to show you the different types of candy in the game and how much they're going to be worth for you. So this is different for each player, which is pretty cool. So you're going to find out early on kind of who's trying to collect which type of candy the most, probably because they have that high up on their points list. But essentially... You're going to deal out some of these uh, trick-or-treaters in this game. And they're going to be various kids dressed as different things. Uh, they all have a point value on them. And as you play your cards, sort of like in Smash Up, you're going to be playing your cards to one of these kids. And if the total value of the ghosts there meets or exceeds that number on the kid, that kid becomes scared and you collect that child. Now, you do not want the kids in this game, all right? You're trying to steal their candy, but not scare the bejesus out of them, which is an interesting concept. <laughs> Basically, every kid's going to have a different type of candy card that you'll, you'll keep adding after each round. And when you play a ghost there, you're going to get that candy and do whatever that kid says. I got to say, for just a card game, there's a good amount of strategy in here because the, the trick-or-treaters here do a lot of different stuff, like you know moving candy around, switching stuff with players, things like that. Some of them just keep coming back and, and are, are worth different amount of points. So for a small game, there's a pretty good amount of re replayability here because you're probably not going not gonna to go through the whole deck of, uh, of the trick-or-treaters here. But that is basically the entire game. You're playing a card doing the action, stealing some candy, and that's pretty much it. And you do that till the whole deck runs out, and then everyone's going to reveal their uh, candy scoring card <clears throat> and add up their points. Be like, oh, I got, you know, this many gummy bears that are worth five points each. I got 30 points gummy bears. Next one, next one, next one. That's it. Pretty quick game, and um, definitely best with more players. Like, I think the higher right, player count, right. the better for this one. So uh, I this game, now, I got to play this with you around Halloween, I think, two years ago, and okay. it was great. I do not like a game that is a deck of cards with numbers on it. Because mm. most of the games, when I'm looking at a game, and if I'm going to like it, I'm looking at it in terms of a two-player experience. And it's not a lot of games that's a deck of cards with numbers on it that are really a great two-player experience. Yeah. So I would never look at this game and get it. It, it would just it'd be like, oh, that looks cute. And I was so glad you got it. It's a great filler game because it's... 
Yeah. It's so simple that it feels, you know, you feel like you're, oh, you're not getting enough, but it's got so much theme, right? It's got uh, ghosts for Halloween. It's got candy for Halloween. It's got trick or treaters. And it's and just, I gotta say, the trick or treater, like the costumes that are there yeah. and the effect that they do, like they, they definitely put thought into this. Like the yeah. effect is pretty thematic with, with what that person is like, there's a Robin Hood one, I think, which lets you take whoever has the most candy and give it to the person who has the least. <laughs> right. And that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I agree. Good filler. Yeah. And I got to tell you, I am a fan of this kind of cute little art. It's 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 nice. I like it. Yeah. It's a that's good thing. simple, right? It's just, yeah. you know, you don't have to look at it much. There's not a lot of details there, but it's it serves a purpose. What are you drinking there? You got some uh, some some blood red wine? Sure. It's, All right. It's... Yeah, I got some. I got some blood red uh, fruity liquor. <laughs> I, I wanted I wanted something cool. I want you know so for Halloween because uh, we're recording this before Halloween and I haven't gotten out to get my Halloween themed beers yet. And so I was a little disappointed. So I wanted to have something. So I got got my Snoopy cup. I don't know if I showed that already. I got my Snoopy Halloween cup there. Okay. So Charlie Brown is a pirate. Charlie Brown's a pirate. Snoopy's a, a vampire. Okay. Whoever that is, it's Linus. Linus is a, a wizard witch or a warlock. Yeah. And then, yeah, Lucy. Nobody cares about Lucy. But yeah. So, uh, so I got my themed drink, my themed cup. My game, my final game for Halloween is called Halloween. This is a game designed by Angelo De Mayo. It's uh, two to four players. Plays in about 45 to 90 minutes, and it's for ages 12 and up. Also... It comes in this cool little drawer box, which it's not great, but it's. I don't have a lot of games that do that. I don't hate it, and so I just wanted to point it out because it's neat. Hmm. So this is a tactical game, which I actually I had to look up. I, I was like, oh, it's a tactical game. Does that just mean like like combat? And no, it doesn't. So a tactical game is when it's a game where you're making decisions based on your, your current situation and your short-term goals as opposed to a strategic game where you're making decisions based on your long-term goals. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I wasn't, I didn't know that. Anyway, there's also some, some action points. There's action retrieval, dice rolling, and, you know, movement on the board, all types of like kind of little mechanisms all in the one game. Mm -hmm. So basically you got a bunch of ghosts on the board. Now, this isn't the board. This is actually the back of the board. I thought it looked really cool. It has, Again, this game has amazing artwork, and these ghosts look really cool, too. So I just yeah. wanted to kind of showcase that for a second. I forget which game you were talking about in the other video, and I think I asked you if it was this game, because I remember these these figures. Right. It was Ghost Tell. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so you got a bunch of ghosts on the board. And again, this isn't the board. And everyone has access to the same ghosts, right? It's not like I get the red ghost or I get whatever. We're all controlling the same, the same ghosts. We're like demon lords trying to cause the most havoc and chaos on Halloween night. And yeah, that's, that's I guess, the idea behind the game. Um, so you have these player boards, which will have certain amount of actions for a certain amount of ghosts so you can control up to three different ghosts and you're going to be doing different actions you're going to be upgrading your ghosts you're going to be moving them and, and summoning them and making more ghosts basically if you have two ghosts of the same color on a location they make another ghost if you <laughs> use that action um, or you can try scaring or fighting really you just want to try and get the most ghosts out there Upgrade them all the way up to level five, mm -hmm. which is the red ghost, and then bring them to a location and do the haunt action and score because the red ghosts are worth the, worth the most points. So there's only six locations. So the game kind of becomes a race to see who can get the red ghost onto a location and haunt that location and do at least three of those or four of those before the other opponent the, the other player can do that or the other players can do that right, right, right. i've only ever played this game like two or three players <clears throat> and it kind of loses a little bit of theme it, it seems more mathematics based where you're just like i have to get these points and then there's some action cards on the top where, which will give you you know special powers and different ways to get victory points but it, it or scare points i think or haunt points I, I think it's actually haunt points it's 
it's okay as a game. It's fun to play on Halloween because the artwork is just so amazing. But the game itself kind of falls a little bit flat because, it, it like I said, it just seems like you're trying to move over here and, and score points before they can move over there and score points. And, and But it looks cool. So, I, I agree 100%. Whatever. I agree 100%. You played um, this one? Yeah, I played this with you guys, and 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 same. It's you, you. The game that it ends up being is not the game that it looks like it's going to be. That doesn't mean it's a bad game by any means. Um, no, but because you're when you're sitting down to play this you know, Halloween game with these cool ghosts, it felt less thematic as the yeah. game went on. Like you said, you see all this cool artwork and these components, these ghosts, and you're like, oh, this is gonna be cool. It's Halloween. It's got Halloween, just jack o' lanterns and go. This is gonna be, and it's just like move over here and score before, mm -hmm. you know, and then move over here and score. Oh, move over here and then get rid of the red ghost after you score. So that way, the other, okay, yeah, you know, yeah, right. yeah. The, the decision making is is separate, much much separate from or very separated from the theme. Yeah, for sure. All right, last game. All right, last game. So. We mentioned trick-or-treating, dressing up. Maybe you have a costume party, and that's exactly what this game is based on. So this is the Pumpkin King having his annual uh, fall dance, I guess, at his castle. But it's such a popular party that some people are not going to make it into the party. They're going to be stuck outside. And this is called Castle Party. This is a brand new game that just came out in 2021. And this is a flipping right. So that's another flipping right for us on Halloween night here. What's different and unique about this flipping right, though, is that you're going to be building the shapes as a group of players. Now, it's not cooperative, but basically on the active player's turn, they're going to flip over one of these uh, shape cards, and you'll notice that they all have an X somewhere on them. So they'll flip over that shape, and then they're going to play one of the monster cards from their hand to start building that particular, you know, polyomino shape. And the next player is going to add a card, and so on, until that shape is complete. Then everyone will draw that shape on their player board. So as the active player, you have a little bit of an advantage because you do get to uh, a orient the card the way you want it. Because this is one of those games where where you're sitting determines, you know, the angle of the thing that you're getting. So if you rotate a shape a certain way, it's going to be placed on your board differently than to your left or across from you, which adds, you know, a lot more variability to it as well. You're not going to end up with a lot of similar looking boards at the end of this game. So there's different types of monsters that you play from your hand. And basically, they all have this little symbol on them, which is pretty cool because that's the symbol that you actually draw on your board. And, you know, it's for little symbols. They're kind of thematic. I mean, the Frankenstein ones have a square because, you know, he's square head. <laughs> uh, the witches have a little witch hat. Vampires have some vampire teeth and so on. So wait, wait, wait. Before you go so on. Yes. What are the circles? The I'm circles trying, are, I can't... They're just ghosts. They're spirits. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It looks like just a little old lady drinking wine. I don't know why they're circles. I kind of feel like it was a missed opportunity because I feel like the classic like Pac-Man ghost shape is really easy to pull off, right? It's yeah. just like a, a, like a, a basketball arc thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, but, you know, maybe an expansion. Who knows? Uh, but as you can see, this is kind of like how a board might look at the end of the game. The other thing I should mention is that there's these, in the deck of the shape cards, there's three cards that are grandfather clocks that you shuffle in randomly. And each time one of those comes out, you're going to choose to do one of these three events at the party. Um, and that's either a fireworks display, uh, a conga line, or a toast to the pumpkin king. They all score differently. The fireworks show is going to score you points for every monster you have at a window who can see the fireworks. The conga line is going to score your largest uh, orthogonally adjacent group of the same monsters. And then the toast is basically you draw the pumpkin king on one of the squares, and you're going to get points for each unique monster in the surrounding squares, so the eight around him. And that's basically the game. 
Uh, the strategy definitely comes in and again, how you want to orient the shape when it's your turn, uh, which monsters you want to play down. I should note also that there is, in each type of monster, there is a king um, variant, which is a little bit oh, of a Oh, is that what that artwork. little dot is? Yeah, so you see it on okay. the vampire one there, there's yeah. a dot. Every, every monster type has a king. And essentially when you do end game scoring, if you have a king, you're, you're going to score for your biggest group of each monster. Um, and then if you have a, a king in that one, you'll get additional points. It doesn't look like you scored very many points for that vampire king tucked down there in the bottom right-hand corner, huh? No, I did not. <laughs> I did not. Um, what I don't have a picture is of is actually the, the reverse of these boards are a little bit of a different setup. Uh, the room is a little bit different, but there's also these icons at various part points in the room, which will score differently based on which monsters want to go there. And there's a there's a cool little explanation in the rule book about it too. I forget what all of them are, but you know, one of them is like the like big speakers, and the Frankenstein monsters like to go there because they like to you know just vibrate around the dance floor, so they will uh, you know gravitate towards the speakers because they like the sounds. And basically, you can draw outside of the party room. As you can see there, I have some symbols written on the outside. Now, if they're in the moat, which is all that purple stuff, you are going to lose points uh, for those at the end of the game. But at the very bottom of your board, that little drawbridge there, you're free to write as many symbols as you can fit on there. And those do not deduct points at the end of the game because they're... Not in the party, but they're at least at the door and not drowning with uh, sea monsters. <laughs> so there's that. Is that alligator wearing a costume? I believe everyone is wearing a costume of some kind. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, the other one's got sunglasses. The other got okay. Cute. Yeah. yeah. So I, you know what? I, I like the artwork in this. It's you know what? It's it's similar to the artwork in Ghost Love Candy. It's it's very you know it's got that cute yes kind of kind of look and appeal to it. I, I like I like it. That's true. That's true. And so we're going to focus on that as one of the aspects here of the Board Game Dad's patent pending rating system called <laughs> FAX. So if you're not familiar with how FAX works, there is a possibility of two points per letter. And then we give this game an overall score. Now we are specifically rating these games on how do they play with younger folks. Right. Doesn't mean that only kids will be playing them, but that kind of factors into to the score here. So we're going to start off with the F, which is what. Now, Eric. Be, before we go on, oh, what okay. is the age range on this one again? Oh, apologies. Yes, this is uh, ages eight and up. Eight and up. Okay, so for F, for is this game fun for the family? Now it's a flipping right. So I'm going to love it. So I, I would already just assume let's give that a two. But like are kids really into, you know, like because it looks cool. And then you just put in a symbol on the board. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I don't. I think that's what hesitates me from giving this uh, a full points at two. I don't know. I I don't know if I can envision playing this game with eight year olds. Right. It seems a little thinky. For, I think it is. Yeah. So that's why I don't think it gets a full two. I think okay. it would play well if it was just that age group. Like if it was just kids playing, I think it's fine. I right. don't know if it works as that, as we're saying, a quote unquote fun for the whole family. I don't know if an eight-year-old is going to compete with an older person in this type of, of game. So for that reason, I'm going to drop it down. I think I'm going to give it a one. Okay. All right, so the A, does this appeal to the age range? All right, so I think it does. Again, I think a bunch of kids would enjoy playing this game amongst themselves. Um, I think the drawing of the little symbols kind of is you know, cutesy enough for them to, to kind of hold them over. Right. So I have a question, though. Yeah. Because like, you have more experience you know, because you were a teacher. At what age do you think a kid would turn and look at this and be like, no, no, no? that's too cute i want it to look cool not cute is that you know is that like the eight eight nine ten or is that like you know 11 12 13 think, where, where they yeah i think that would be more of a middle a middle school junior high age thing okay where they're much more opinionated in what's considered you know cool or not 
All right, so now components. How are the components for this? Because like I already said, I think it looks cool, but I can't hold the components in, in my hands and feel, you know, how they, yeah. how they you know, if they're flimsy or, or, or whatnot. So what do you think so, about this? So real quick before, so I want to give a score to the A. I think I'm also going to do a one for oh, that. I'm sorry. No, you're good. So we're going to have a, a one for F and a one for A. Okay. Components, um, these are square cards, which I like, and they're they're pretty good. They're not like flimsy or anything. Uh, the dry erase boards are pretty solid. Again, I love the fact that they have two different sides to them, and it's not just a different visual setup. You know, it changes the gameplay. So I like that as well. My one knock <laughs> on the components. So I open this box. We play for the first time, and there are four different colored markers okay so i pick orange because i want to write in orange right it's a good halloween themed color absolutely all the markers are black mm. but they have colored tops and bottoms to them why why a that probably had to cost you a little more money and if you're going to pay that much more money just pay extra money and get a different literally a different ink color for the marker was this a kickstarter no, i don't think so oh because I, I could see you know them showing a picture of the markers in different colors and being you know just the color of the marker be like hey we got <laughs> this game comes with its own markers and you're like oh great and they don't actually say you know each one the color on the marker is just the term player color it's actually just a regular black marker so super disappointed in that it's gonna it's going to knock it off a half a point. So I'm going to go 1.5 for the components on this one. Ouch, a half a point? Okay. All right. Well, All right. We don't, now, we're not doing quarter points here. <laughs> we, you know what? I was I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, you know what? We could do quarter points. Right. We're not going any any lower than quarter point. We'll talk about that off air. <laughs> All right. So, the teachability. Is this, is this uh, have you taught this to anybody under the age of, you know, 30? Yes. I have okay. actually. So I have taught this to a couple of, of novice gamers and they picked it up fairly well. So I don't, by the way, I don't know why I cho chose the age 30. I should have said like, like 20 or something, 30, like a 29 year old is not going to be able to figure out. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. You're only 29. You can't do this flip and write game. <laughs> um, but in terms we'll of teaching on. like the flip and write mechanic, I don't think this is much of a stretch. Like it's a little bit different in that you're you're building what the shape is, so to speak. But the concept of hey, you're going to draw the shape on your board is not a hard one to teach. All right, I don't think so. I I'm going to go ahead and give this a two for the T. Okay, and finally, the skill sets. Okay, what do you got to say about that one? So we talk about skill set and what is a, a, a player, specifically a younger person, going to to take away from this game, right? Are they going to learn how to do something specific? Is there an educational value to this? No, it's just this is purely, you know, drawing and and thinking. It's not you're not learning anything from this. Well, there's I mean, there's like a little bit of like spatial recognition or something. Well, no, like no, that, yes. Right? No, for sure. I meant like in terms of the content of the game. Like it's not okay. it's not an well, educational game. Yeah. But yes, you're going to learn spatial recognition and 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 planning coupled with that, right? Right. Because you're going to start to see what types of shapes there are. And there's not a whole lot. There's, I believe, a one square, a two square, and a three square, and then a, a four square, like a, you know, a bigger square, and a couple of those L things. And that's pretty much it. Okay. So you're going to want to not paint yourself into a corner of your board, right? Where like, you're not going to be able to fill in that extra spot. So that, you know, having that forward thinking, I think is something that you could use in other games that are similar to this in terms of a flip and write, you know, like a cartographers or something like that. Now, is this, does this game have, it has some games that come out and they have like the rules and then there's the basic rules so that you could play it like the family version so you could play it a little bit easier i've got a couple of roll. it's not so often in rolling rights but i got a couple rolling rights where they have like the basic game and then the full game and then you're like oh the basic game's easy let's check out the full game and then oh uh, there's a lot more going on in this one yeah i don't know if they call it that specifically but i mean i would definitely say 
the, is there the like one, an advanced version or a family well, the version? Other, the other side of the board is more advanced, for sure. Oh, right. Duh. Because you have to put specific monsters at specific spots instead of having like free range, basically. Right. So have and you played that you've played that one, the advanced version? We haven't actually. We've only played oh, the, okay. the one side. Yeah. Um the other thing I will say is, and they don't mention this, but I think if you want it to make it a little simpler, you could probably A take out the uh king versions of each card. And then also, I didn't really mention this, but the one creature, the unicorn, is is different than the others in that the the way they score is more of a set collection type thing whereas if you have only one unicorn you actually get like negative points if you have two you get like you know zero or one or something and that gets exponentially bigger the more unicorns you have it could be another layer of thinking that you might want to eliminate if you were trying to scale this down for younger folks a little bit i think all right so what do we give this one for skill set before we uh, before we get away from there i'm going to go 1.5 again 1.5. All right. So we have a total. You, you, you added them up, I assume. We got a 7.0 for Castle Party. Age range, 8 and up. Now, I just want to point one more thing out about this game. Now, I've never played this game. I don't own this game. I'm looking at it, and I see, you know, they got witches, and there's vampires, and ghosts, like you said before, Frankenstein, Pumpkin King. There's some bats on the cover. What are unicorns doing in this game? They couldn't come up with anything scary, like the headless horseman or something like that. They'd be like, "Oh yeah, we got bats, oh, we got and a unicorn." <laughs> I don't know. I found it odd. I don't know if there's any mention in the rule book specifically about why unicorns are at this party. Maybe the pumpkin king just really enjoys looking at unicorns. I don't know. I will say that it did come with one promo card. Um, which was, was the Wolfman. Santa Claus? No, oh. it's Wolfman. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's pretty thematic. It, okay. Remember I told you about the fireworks thing. You're going to score points for how many monsters you have by windows. If right. you have the Wolfman by a window. So if you're playing with the Wolfman, before you play the game, you draw a moon outside of one of the spaces. And if cool. you're lucky enough to get the Wolfman and you draw him by that window, you're going to get more points for him than M -O -O -N. you would other monsters. And that spells moon. Ooh. What's that from? The I stand. want to hear it in the comments. Oh, oh no. So, I thought you were asking me. <laughs> All right. Don't worry about the comments section then. He ruined it. All right. I uh, will say real quick, I just want to go back and uh, and mention the appeal part again. I'm not changing my score. I just wanted to focus on the artwork. I think... There are a good amount of kids who enjoy this type of artwork specifically about monstrous creatures. And I say that because I have nieces who love, um, oh, what is the name of the show? They're Monster like, High. yes, yes, Monster High. Castle Party, highly recommend it. Um, the first flip right I've seen that does that communal building thing, right? So that's. It's pretty different, I think. All right, Eric. All right. Our pillow case is getting pretty heavy. I'm not saying we have to stop trick or treating, but it might be mm -hmm. time to do a drop off. Yeah. And maybe, you pizza. know, get some pizza, put some MMs on there, and then head back out and do a third round because that's how we did it back in the day. If the lights are on, we can still knock on their door. <laughs> All right, folks, uh, thanks again for watching. Of course, we'd love for you to like this video and subscribe if you have not already. And look, if you're like, oh, every time they say subscribe, I've already done that, Board Game Dads. I can't subscribe more than once. That's true. But you could recommend the channel to somebody else. Bring a friend. Go ahead and recruit somebody and, and get us up to those, those higher numbers there. We would love it. We also would love to hear in the comments from you. We do want to hear, are there games that you like to play specifically on Halloween night, do you have a Halloween night tradition? Do you go trick or treating? Did you go trick or treating as a kid? Do you have kids? Do you go with them now? We want to hear it. Let us know. Eric, yep. anything else to add? Yes, before? I've been waiting four weeks of videos for this. <laughs> have a happy Halloween. Be safe and eat a lot of candy, right? I was going to say, don't eat too much candy, but it's Halloween. Just, you know, go crazy. Yeah. 
the rough part is in the weeks that follow Halloween, like the bowl is just there and it's like it's not there long. No. Remember how, how a, much fun not, it was? Not for the days following Halloween. <laughs> Remember how much fun it was to bring candy to school for lunch the next day, for weeks after that as part of your lunch and snack? Oh, man, so good. You know what was great? Now, again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, like say anything. Oh, this is great. I had an older brother, you know, and we were very close in age. So, you know, end of the night, we're finally done trick-or-treating. We come back and we dump everything out on the table. And we're like, all right, this is mine. These are mine. I want these. Oh, you don't like those? I'll give you a Reese's for one of the, and just like trading and just stockpiling all this good candy. Be like, oh, I haven't had one of those. I'll give you one of these Starbursts for, you know, this uh, hundred grand. Like, oh, sure. That was cool. Quick story before you just reminded me of something when you said hundred grand and then we'll stop. Two years ago, the day after Halloween, I was taking my son for a walk, pushing the stroller, and there was a hundred grand bar on the ground. Uh oh. The mini one. And there was this uh, woman, older woman, outside of her house. And I stopped the stroller. I looked at the candy. I looked at her. And I was like, You gonna judge me if I pick up this candy? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, no, go ahead. So I ate it. Listen, it was the morning after Halloween. I am I'm very certain that like I'm nothing, not saying anything. I'm I, not saying this anything. wasn't like stepped on or like rolled over, like it was freshly dropped. You know what I mean? Like it was I was just expecting there. there to be like a bigger, you know, like and then the next day I woke up in a ditch somewhere and I don't know what happened for the last 14 hours of my life. <laughs> That would have been a cool ending. All right. We'll work on that for the sequel. Yeah. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. Goodbye.